Okay, grade 12, so we're busy with revision here, and we, I'm just here in class with my own learners, so I'm going to do revision. I'm going to use um, paper uh, of 2021. It is the November exam. Uh, you can go, download that, of course, from the internet. Um, those of you who are members, you'll be able to get that resources through the um, All Access membership resources. But for now... This is available online also to anybody else. And it is the question for civil drawing. And now I've uh, just in the class did a bit of a survey. And there's a big question with regards to the sectional elevation. And so in this video, I'm not going to be talking through all the different components of this, but zooming in only on the sectional elevation. Now, to help you out, um, there is the question sheet. And they've given to us a floor plan. And we would have drawn, in this drawing, we would have drawn, of course, the, um, we would have completed the floor plan. We would have done a elevation on this side. And I'd like to show you that just on, from the memo. So just for you to take note of this. There we have it. Um, and so the floor plan, that's kind of straightforward um, with the windows and the doors. Your elevation is going to be straightforward. Just remember the double lines on your roofing, what a lot of kids keep missing. And then on your gutter going around there, if it's got a shield corner like this, we have a gutter running around. Remember that. And that's it. But I want to get to the actual sectional elevation. And this is taken from this cutting plane here. Now, of course, this cutting plane will also um, draw to your actual incomplete foundation and external wall details. And in this, there's a couple of things. Measurements, heights, you've got um, from the foundation, um, you've got your different floors, you've got your paving here, you've got your wall, uh, the top of the courtyard there, which is actually, if you look at the section elevation and direction, that's the top of that courtyard wall here that they've given you the height for. And they take you all the up to the wall plate height, which is a 3.08 meters. Then there's roof notes, and it will always be similar to this you've got the angle of the roof the 800 that's the center to center spacing of your purlins um, again this is incomplete but this is a schematic diagram of the roof truss they tell you the pitch of the roof what material is used to make the roof truss including the wall plate the roof overhang to the end of this roof truss 300 the fiber cement sheeting the purlins the spacing there again the fascia boards ceiling board so all of that plays in to your sectional elevation. The sectional, sectional elevation here, um, which a lot of learners struggle with, is this actual roof end. And uh, we're going to take a moment to help you draw that. Just for yourself, here are the tips that they already give you in this paper. So if you look at this, for your roof angle, there's a one potential mark, and that's going to be an A. Did you get this angle correctly at 30 degrees? The roof sheet that's over it, is there double lines there for that roof sheeting? And does it run all the way past your fascia into the gutter? So if it rains, water runs down into the gutter. That's the mark there for your roof sheeting. The purlin and spacing, that's the purlin there. It's a 50 by 75, so 75 is the height there. And is the space spacing from this center to that center to that center as stated on this 800 to 800, 800, okay? And then your D is your truss and overhang, so this actual, this actual truss, it's also this height, which must be 115, um, and the overhang they specified as 300, again, in this document. So, you really, great tells you have to read through what is given. You can't draw this without the given information. And then the last one is the fascia here, with the gutter, rainwater downpipe that passes behind there, Behind that wall um, that they've given you, the wall plate is a 115 by 30. It's the 115 by 30, uh, 115 by 40. There we have that. And look at the ends, how it's indicated. Ends of wood is indicated with that cross, right? And then uh, branding and spacing. There's my branding again, center to center, 400, and a double line again there to get that right for your ceiling board. That's a total of 14 just in this part here. 14 potential marks for you and then your wall coming down uh, now this cuts through a window so you're always going to have a window lintel here above the window 
You've got your two double lines in the middle of the opening. And then you've got your, let me zoom in there a little bit, the actual uh, window sill here. There's the actual sill. Again, that's specified in your um, 150 times 25 by cement sill under all windows. All right, that's a note. And that's that one there, 150 by 20. And there it's filled up with some cement and your damp proof course runs here, DPC. All right, that's your window. And when we come down here, we've got your... Um, Damp proof course running again like this with your concrete, your compact fill, undisturbed ground, a compact fill underneath the paving and the hatching. Please don't get confused. Uh, two double lines, space, two double lines. Can be spaced a little bit further, but that is going to be required. Okay, let's um, see if we can draw specifically just in this video this part because this is a challenge for a lot of learners. I'm going to zoom myself out there and it's going to be up here. So, Get my ruler quickly. Okay, so wall thickness they specified as 200, and this is drawn scale 1 to 20. So uh, 1 to 20, and in the center, I'm going to get my 200, which is 100 on either side, and the height here it's 3080. So just two construction lines. Now I can draw the detail of all the different components, the floor and the window, etc. I think that you should be fine with. All right, so the height here, I have to just keep me that measured, 308. Okay, let's zoom in now. Now we can get this drawn. Okay. So this line that I drew here, that is in fact, oops, sorry about that. That's in fact this top line here. Okay, so it's in the middle, 200, 100 on either side. Okay, what's the first thing that I'm going to add on top of this wall? The wall plate, which is 115. So just a bit more than one and a half millimeters. That I can draw in nice and dark. That's my wall plate. In line with that, I'm going to have the bottom of my truss. This truss is 115, so 1 to 20. It's going to be... All right, that's in construction. So this is the first part of the truss. And then we're going to do a 30 degrees from this corner. Okay. That's the wall plate. And this is important. This point is critical. That is the bottom of my truss at... 30 degrees, okay, going this direction, just in construction, and then 90 degrees out here, we're going to measure 115, now you can just do a construction line, measure that 115, okay, so once you have that, you're halfway done, overhang here is 300, okay, so that's a perpendicular measurement, that goes up, All right, there it is. And then we have our fascia, which is um, 20 millimeters also. That's just a millimeter wide. And that's got, okay, we'll do the height of that now. There's the fascia. All right, now we start spacing our purlins. Let me just delete some of that. Okay, the purlin height, again, a 90 degree purlin height here is 75. And at 30 degrees, that's going to be our roof sheeting running down over that fascia and it's a double line all right flip that first purlin is in the corner here and that's got to be a 50 width so it's half of that all right the spacing here center to center is 800 so you're going to measure from there uh sorry so one to 20 800 there's the next center and so the last one is going to be outside that and that's going to then be 50 as well double check there 800 here ok 
Okay. Top of that truss. And that one runs all the way through. Okay, there's a X there. It's the end of um, wood, so you have to have a cross in there. All right, same here on my wall plate. Can have a cross in there. Okay, then our Berlin. Uh, um, Ceiling, so the brand ring, double line, please. You can do it just at the bottom of that. Um, and then the 40, so that's a 38 by 38. 400 center to center. That's the brand ring there, square. Same on this side. Same on this side. And it gets an X in there. You can use your 45 for that. You are definitely getting a roof end. That's, there's no doubt you're getting a roof end. You can be certain of that, so please make sure you practice this. Um, um, that's a 250 here. All right. On top of this, we get our gutter, the gutter size, 150 by 100, so that's our 150 here, and the height is 100. Okay, and on this here, they give you the exact requirements for that gutter. So there's a distance of 100 millimeters, then we've got 30 degrees. Okay, so we're going to have to do that. And that downpipe width is also 100. So that means this must be a hundred, so for that you'll have to measure. Okay, running down here, it's a hundred wide as well. Okay, the height of our wall that we're going to draw here is at 2080. So we'll just get that height. That's top of that wall. I'm just going to draw the complete drawing. It's a cutter. Okay, and in these bends there's a corner. Okay, then behind this fascia, if I look at um, where this cutting plane is, if I look at this cutting plan, I'm looking in the direction of the arrows. If I look in this direction, past the wall, do you see at the bottom there's another fascia running this way? That's why there needs to be a line. And I can guarantee you, your drawing that you're going to get is going to have something like this. So please pay attention. They actually check, check that where the learners are able to see that. That line there is if I look in the direction of the arrow, the fascia runs one end and then here it turns direction. So if I look in this direction, I'm going to see the bottom of that. And that rainwater downpipe is the one that I see. That wall there on top is this top wall that they see. Okay, let's make sure we've got our, I think my spacing is 100% here. There's another um, I've missed. 
Okay. All right, so we've got our roof sheeting and we can go through our marks here. We've got a roof sheet. We've got our um, purlins here. If water runs down this roof, it falls in the gutter. We've got a gutter drawn, a truss is drawn. And the only thing that's left here is to make sure this part is patched. So at 45 degrees, starting there on top, that's a closed eave there. Evenly spaced, please. All right, I'm going to draw the rest of that. That's, uh, is there any questions in class? Anybody that wanting to be sure any part of this that was drawn? Maybe something that you'd like me to repeat? Right, you're going to get this guaranteed, so please take the time to study this. Um, the window we've looked at and also the foundation there at the bottom. Civil uh, drawing is going to be part of your requirements so please make sure you draw this and practice some of these from previous papers and make sure you're able to draw them within about an hour and 30 minutes right that's it thank you for watching